Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Masechus Tainis DAF Yud Gimel contains two primary sugyas. The first one, which takes up about three quarters of the DAF, discusses washing oneself on a fast day or during a period of mourning. The Mar will compare fast day and period of mourning as far as this Allah will supply. The Gemara will bring three statements of Amarayim. The Gemara will bring five proofs or questions to and against the statements of those Amarayim. The Gemara will then go on to the topic of saying Anenu on a fast day. The Gemara will discuss when you say Anenu, where you say Anenu, is Anenu a separate bracha, and is, is there a difference between a public fast and a personal fast concerning these halachas. So let's begin. We begin with a discussion about washing oneself, and we have a comparison with a period of mourning and a fast day. Now, a period of mourning would be somebody who's lost a close relative, so he's an Avel. It would also be everybody on the Tisha B'Av. Those are mourning periods. Now, there are certain restrictions during that time, which is similar to fast days. And when we say fast days, we mean all the other fast days besides the Tisha B'Av and the fast days that are instituted for a lack of rain. Now, on a fast day, what we're really doing is we're just trying to paint ourselves as a form of tshuva. On a period in mourning and on the Tishbav, it's a symbol of mourning that we withhold from certain things. So the question is about washing the body. So the Gemara brings three statements of uh, Amram, first of Chizda, and then two versions of Rav. So what we have from Rav Chizda are two halachos. The Gemara will discuss both of them independently. The first one, which we'll speak about, is the halacha that on a regular fast day, it is permitted to wash in cold water. It's mutter to wash with cold water on a fast day. So the Gemara says, is that is that uh, true? Is it really permitted to wash with cold water on a fast day? So the Gemara says we can maybe possibly bring a support that on a regular fast day, let's say a rain fast day, you're allowed to wash with cold water. Um, what's a support? So the Gemara says, if you look at a Mishnah which discussed the halachas of those fast days, the Mishnah had said that it's also to wash. It didn't mention if it's hot water or cold water. It could be that it means just hot water. And then it said that um, we close the, we, we seal off the bathhouses. Now, sealing off the bathhouses only takes away hot water. So that would seem to be an indication that it's only us or to wash in hot water on a fast day because we close off the bathhouses so you can't wash in hot water. So Gemara questions this. Gemara says, what do you mean? Maybe not to wash in cold water either, but what do you want them to do? Stop up the rivers? You can't stop up the rivers. You close off what you can do. You close off the bathhouse. How does that prove that only hot water is us or, but cold water is a mutter? So the Gemara says, no. What we mean to say is as follows. The Mishnah is a bit strange. The Mishnah says that it's us or to wash, and then it goes ahead and says they close the bathhouses. Why do you need to tell me that they close the bathhouses? What are you adding? If it's us or to wash, for sure the bathhouses will be closed because there's no business. So obviously what the Mishnah means to say is only the bathhouses have to be closed because it's only hot water that's a problem. We don't have to worry about anything else because cold water washing is permitted. So that's the Gemara's proof to the first half of Rav Chizit that you're allowed to wash cold water on a fast day. Now, the next part is going to be a much more lengthy discussion, and that's the other half of Rebchizah's halacha, where he said that it's also to wash with cold water on an Avelis day. In Avel, or on Tisha B'av, it's forbidden to wash the body even with cold water. That's what Rebchizah says. The more is two versions of Rava. According to one version, the first version, Rava disagrees with that. Rava says, no, it's mutter to wash with cold water on a fast day. And Rava says that that is just like wine and meat. In Avel, during Shiva, is allowed to eat meat and he's allowed to drink wine. And the reason he's allowed to do that is because he doesn't have to paint himself. These things are pleasurable things. He's allowed to do that. So, washing in cold water, he's also allowed to do that. It's not about abstaining from pleasurable things. It's about a symbol of mourning and uh, restraining oneself from hot water is a symbol of mourning. There's no reason to restrain oneself from washing in cold water. That's Rava. Disagreeing with Rav Chizda. The second version of Rava is the same as Rav Chizda. Rava also agrees that it's also to wash um, in cold water on a period of mourning or on Tisha B'Av. And uh, the Gemara there explains that it's different than meat and wine. Although meat and wine is permitted for an Avel, that's because he needs it for an Achama. He needs it to comfort himself. He needs these things to help calm his his uh, state of mind. But uh, washing oneself in cold water, that's not required. So now the Gemara is going to get into this and the Gemara will have four proofs either way. The Gemara brings one as a supporter of Chizda, one as a kasha of Chizda, 
Another one as a support to uh, Rava and a kasha on Rav Chizda. And then a fourth one as a support to Rav Chizda. So we'll get into all these four things and we'll discuss with each one who it supports. So the Gemara's first approach uh, to support or ask on these halachos. Again, the issue at hand is are you allowed to wash with cold water on a morning day, such as during one's shiva, or on a tish above. So the Gemara wants to first bring a support to Rechizda's claim that it's Aser. What's a support? So the Gemara says it comes from a b'risa that says that somebody who's chayef tefilo shal mitzvah, somebody needs to go to the mikvah, like a zav or a zava or a nida, they are allowed to go to the mikvah, they're allowed to uh, do tevila, even though they're washing themselves in cold water, they're allowed to do that on uh, Tish above, even though it's a morning day. Uh, the Gemara, the uh, Bryce also says they're allowed to uh, do that on Yom Kippur, but today we don't do that on Yom Kippur. So now, the Gemara says as follows. So now let's analyze this. So this implies that somebody who has the mitzvah is allowed to go into cold water, is allowed to go into the mikvah. Somebody who does not have tefillah's mitzvah is not allowed to go into water. What type of water are we talking about over here? Says the Gemara, we can't be talking about hot water because there is no mikvah. That's hot water. How are you going to heat water in kosher mikvah water? The only way to heat water in the days of Chazal is to put it in a kli and put it on the fire. If that's what you do, then it's she'uven, it's drawn water, it's possible for the mikvah. Therefore, it's got to be talking about cold water. And you see it clearly says that only a person who's chayav tefillah is allowed to go in, but everybody else is asr. So that implies, like Rav Chizda said, that it is asr to go into cold water, is asr to wash oneself in cold water on a morning day. So Gemara says... It's not necessarily talking about cold water. Maybe I'll tell you it's talking about hot water. You asked me that there's no such thing as a hot water mikvah. There is hot springs, natural hot springs of Tveria. You can use that. Maybe that's what it's referring to. So he says, if that would be the case, that it's only saying that it's permitted um, to do Tvila Shal Mitzvah and hot springs, um, but it's permitted for everybody to wash in cold water. So then I don't understand why is there an issue over here about Tefillah Shal Mitzvah. Everybody's permitted in cold water. As a matter of fact, the end of the Brisa brings an uh, opinion that argues and says that you better off missing a Tefillah as part of a veil for the Beis HaMikdash. So it, it, that's uh, Rav Hanin Eskan HaKahanim who says that. He says that it's worthwhile to miss a tefillah as part of mourning for the house of Hashem. So I understand why should you miss a tefillah? Go into cold water. The only thing that we're discussing is hot water, right? That's what you want to claim, hot springs. So go into a cold water. What's the big deal? Who says you're going to miss a tefillah? Why does he say you're missing a tefillah? So once no, he's referring to a place where there's no cold water. The Tveri area, the only water that's around is hot. You can't have cold water. On that, he says, so you won't go cold water, you'll miss a tefillah, that's fine, that's not an issue. But really, we're discussing tefillah in hot water, cold water is mutter, always, in all circumstances, even for a regular person, not a tefillah shal mitzvah, even on a morning day. All right, that's Gemara's first proof on the subject. The Gemara now goes into its second proof. The Gemara brings a brisa that discusses which part of the body is forbidden to wash. And it says as follows. It's forbidden to wash um, the entire body, but it's permitted to wash the hands, the face, and the feet. That also adds other halachos. It says that um, when you say you're not allowed to wear shoes on a morning day, that's only inside the city. Outside the city, you're allowed to. You go out of the city, you uh, put your shoes on, you come back in, you take your shoes off. That that we said there's an Isra Malacha is also we only refer to during the day, but at night it's mutter. So there's a lot of these halachas that we qualified here. And one of the things we said is that you're allowed to wash your hands, your face, and your feet. So the Gemara now asks, um, washing hands, face, and feet, what are we talking about? Uh, so the Brisa adds one line. It says that this is all for a Tainus. And then it says, and the same thing applies for an Avel or somebody who's in Cherem. He also has these restrictions and these halachos. So now, the Gemara says, when we say that you're allowed to wash your hands, your face, and feet, what are we talking about? We're talking about hot water or cold water. We can't be talking about hot water. Because an Avel is definitely not allowed to wash his hands, face, and feet in hot water. That's clear. He's not even allowed to stick his little finger into hot water. So, it can't be referring to hot water. It must be referring to cold water. And it says that um, you're allowed to wash only your hands, your face, and your feet. Um... But it is um, forbidden to wash the rest of the body. 
So Gemara says, now this Mishra talked about both a regular fast day and a morning day. So you see here clearly that washing your hands, your face, and your feet on a regular, that uh, washing the body on a regular fast day is forbidden. Now, it doesn't fit with the first halacha of Reb Chizda, who said that washing your body on a fast day is permitted in cold water. So what's going on over here? This is a kashan of Chizda. So Gemara says, um, you didn't understand this Mishnah correctly. When we said that the same thing applies, when we said all these halachas, we said the same thing applies to an avel, we weren't talking about all the halachas applied to an avel. We were only talking about halachas about wearing shoes and doing work. Those also apply to an avel. The halach of the water is different for an avel. Therefore, all the halachas that says here about water is nothing to do with, uh, with an avel. It's only talking about a fast day. And when it said that you're allowed to wash your hands and face and feet, but not your body, it's talking about hot water. Hot water is what's permitted um, and on the hands and the face and the feet, and it's forbidden on the body. But if this is really correct, it could be that you're allowed to wash your entire body in cold water on a fast day. It's only hot water which you're referring to here. Our whole kasha was that you can't be allowed to wash your hands in hot water because an oval is not allowed to wash your hands in hot water. That's an oval. But this Mishnah, when it spoke about washing, was only talking about fast days, not talking about an oval. Okay, now the Gemara brings a, another uh, proof. This one's going to be a kasha on Rav Chizda as well. And this one comes from Rav Abba Kain, who says in Rav Yaisi Kain that there's a story that happened with Rav Yaisi Ben Rabbi Chanina, who was an Avel, and he washed himself in cold water. So you see that an Avel is allowed to wash himself in cold water, like Rava's first version, and not like Rav Chizda. So Gemara says, no, this was a special case, and this was where he had two Avelis in a row. He, had, he did not have a break. He had he had lost two sons, one right after the other, and he didn't have a break in his Avelis. And when that happens, we have certain leniencies. And we bring a Bryce that supports that. The Bryce says that somebody who has Avelis in a row stacked up, he's allowed to cut his hair with a shinoi, with a razor. If his hair is too long, he's allowed to wash his clothing with water. If it's too filthy, um, you're only allowed to wash it with uh, water, you're not allowed to use soap or something coarse like uh, sand to scrub it. But all these um, halachas apply for a special leniency when somebody has two avails in a row. So that's why he was allowed to wash. But generally, Chizda could potentially uh, be correct that he would not be allowed to uh, wash even in cold water during a period of mourning. The Gemara now brings its fourth and final uh, support here. This will be a proof to Chizda and Akasha on the first version of Rava. And this comes from the halacha of a girl who has reached marriageable age. So it says as follows, a girl who's a novel, so when she's reached marriageable age, she's not allowed to be novel herself. She's not allowed to become disgusting. When she's not of marriageable age, even though she's an adult, and she's chayv in the halachas of Avelis, she is allowed to keep the halachas of Avelis, even if it winds up that she'll become uh, very unattractive looking during that time because she's not of marriageable age yet. It's not a problem. We don't have to worry about her shuduchim prospects at this point. So the Gemara says when we say that she's allowed to become disgusting if she's of marriageable age, what do we mean by that? Obviously, we mean that she's allowed to wash. Now, what is she allowed to wash? Hot water or cold water? It can't be hot water because like we said earlier, an is never allowed to wash in hot water. So you see, therefore, she's, she's allowed to wash in cold water, but only because she's a marriageable age. Nobody else, including a girl who's not of marriageable age, would be allowed to wash in, even in cold water. Um, and that should be a support to Rav Chizda's position at a Kashan Rava. So Mar says, no, 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 no. This Brisa was talking about something else. It was not talking about washing altogether. It was talking about makeup and hair. She's allowed to put on makeup. She's allowed to take care of her hair if she's a girl of marriageable age. Less than that, she would not be allowed to. But washing, we're not discussing at all, and therefore it does not prove either way as far as washing goes. Now, the Gemara settles the halacha here. The Gemara, first of all, notes another statement of Rav Chizda that says that an avil is also to wash his clothing all seven days. The Gemara seems to base this off the last statement about the makeup and the hair. Rashi uh, understands it that way. Rabbi Kivegar asks that there seems to be no connection between the two. And then the Gemara says that the halacha in all these cases is as follows. An avil is forbidden to wash his body in both hot water and cold water. So, like Rav Chizda... Um, he is allowed to wash his face, his hands, and his feet in cold water. 
and he's a ele- and he's. Uh, forbidden to put oil to anoint himself at all unless he just needs to take away smell. Okay, that concludes that discussion. The Gemara now goes into the topic of when we say Anenu. So the Gemara wants to know where and how and when do we say Anenu in Shemun Esrei on a fast day. So the Gemara says that Rav Yehuda um, said to his son, Rav Yitzchak, he said uh, with him present, he said a drasha, and he said that a yachid, an individual, it should say it in Shmona Esrei. He should say a special bracha of Anenu in Shmona Esrei. Where? Between the bracha of Goel Yisrael and Rifa'enu, he should insert Anenu. So Gemara says, Rav Yitzchak asks that a yachid, an individual, does not have a right to make up a new bracha, to insert a new bracha in Shmona Esrei. Can only a tzibur can insert a new bracha in Shmona Esrei. Therefore, Rav Yitzchak said, that the Yachid will not say it in its own freestanding bracha. The Yachid will only say it as part of Shema Kelenu. Shema Kelenu is an open-ended chasimah. The bracha ends off with Shema Tefillah. You could put anything you want into that bracha. And therefore, you could put this in there. But you can't make a new bracha on your own. Now, Chazin will, of course, because he represents the Tzibor, be able to make a new bracha of Anenu. And that's why he can do that between Gula and Rufua. So Yumar has a, a couple of kashas here. Yumar, first of all, asks, we have a mission that says there's no difference between the individual and the tzibur, um, other than the following. The individual says a Shemon of 18, and the tzibur says a of 19. And we're referring to a fast day over here. So Yumar says, well, what? so you see that there's an extra bracha added. And the extra bracha is added for the tzibur and not for the individual. So where it says, what does we mean when we say individual? What do we mean when we say tzibur? We cannot possibly mean the individual being somebody in his own Shemun Esrei, and the tzibur being the chazen, because the chazen adds five brachas to Shemun Esrei on a fast day. He has 24 brachos, not 19. So therefore, we must mean uh, an individual as in a private fast and an, and an individual in a public fast. Individual in a private fast does not add anenu, and an individual in a public fast does add anenu. So we seem to have found the source here that even an individual in a public fast should add a new bracha of anenu. He shouldn't have to say it in Shema Kailenu, not like what Rav Yitzchak had said. So Gemara says, no, I'll really tell you that you understood this wrong. And when we say an individual and in tzibur, we're referring to a yachid, and we're referring to the chazan. We're not referring to a uh, individual who's fasting, who's davening shmona esrei on a public fast. That's not what we're talking about. We're referring to the chazan. Individual, whether it's a public fast or a private fast, would not say a separate bracha of anenu. Only the chazan could say a separate bracha of anenu. Now, as far as the question you asked, that he should say twenty-four. So the answer is, is that the Chazan only says 24 in some of the fast days. We have 13 fast days that are set up for lack of rain. We have a first set of three, a next set of three, and then a set of seven. So we're referring to the first set of three. In the first set of three, there's no 24 brachos, or only 19 brachos. So you can that that's not true either. You're telling me the first set of three has uh, 19 brachos, and the other 10 fasts have... 24 brachos. It's not true because every price that says that there's no difference between the first set of three and the next set of three. The only difference that it says is the ones that are listed. Whether or not you're allowed to do malacha. And that's it. It doesn't say anything about 24 being a difference. So you can't tell me that the first three don't have 24 brachos and the last three do have 24 brachos. Obviously, all of them have 24 brachos. Therefore, your answer falls off. So it says, no, not true. Umar says that there is this difference is still true. First three you have nineteen brachos, and the last and the next three have twenty four brachos. It's just not mentioned because it left one out. It listed a bunch of differences and it left out. So Umar says, what do you mean? It listed some differences, left out others. First of all, we only have one thing left out, and we have a rule that if a mission is listing things, it can't leave out only one. So it shall be something else that was left off the list. Second of all, it said ain bain. It said there's no difference, except if it says no difference except, you can't tell me that it left one out on the list of. The, the differences it had. It said there are no other ones. So the Gemara gives two uh, further answers. The Gemara says, okay, the Tana of this mission was only talking about Isurim of a fast day. It wasn't talking about Tefillahs of a fast day. He said there's no difference between the first three fast days and the later fast days. He was talking about no difference in the Halachos of the Isurim. He wasn't talking about in the Tefillahs. That's a totally different sugya. That's not what he was involved in. If it doesn't have to leave anything else out, and there's no problem with the Ein Bain. Or I'll give you a different answer. I'll say the first three fast days have 
only 19 brachos. The next set of three Pharisees also have only 19 brachos. And therefore, both sets are the same. And that's what this Mishnah meant when it said the first set and the second set are the same. Because that's really what it said. It said there's no difference between the first ones and the second ones. However, the next set of seven, those will have 24 brachos. So now our Mishnah, which was talking about the tefillah of the chazan, the tefillah of the tzibur, was talking about the chazan, and it didn't say 24 brachos because it was one of the first six brachos, which are all only 19 brachos on for the chazan and not 24. Says so Gemara, this also doesn't work because this also comes out that there's a difference between the first six fasts and the last seven fasts. We have another price that says that there's no difference. The only difference it says, it says there's no difference except for the fact that here you lock the stores and here you don't lock the stores, but everything else are the same. So you can't tell me that the first six have 19 brachos and Shemona Esra and the next seven have only have 24 brachos. So Gemara says, okay. And maybe it'll tell me that it left it out, but it says again, it says, Ain Bain, it says there is no difference, and there's nothing else that's left out. Someone says, no, Ain Bain is not a problem, and there is something else that's left out, and that's that there is a difference that in the last seven fast days, you take the Aron Kodesh out into the street as part of the process, as part of the procedure. In the first six, you don't. So you see that there are differences that weren't mentioned. The Gemara rejects this by saying the fact that we left out the difference between the first two sets of fasts and the last set of fasts, and that the first two sets we don't take the iron out into the street, but the last one we do, that's not a that's not a difference that should be listed in the Mishnah that you could say was left out, because that's a whole different category of halacha. That's the type of thing that's public. It's out of the public eye. It's in the street. Our Mishnah was talking about private things, indoors, in shul, or things like that, of that in nature. It wasn't referring to a public display. So therefore, it's not called something that's left out. Now, the Gemara, again, it goes to a very similar exchange, except that instead of focusing on the Brisa that says, Ein bain the first two sets and the last set of fast, this one says... This one refers to our Mishnah. Our Mishnah had said, how is the third set of fast days greater? How is it stricter than the first two sets? In the sense that on the last one, you close the stores, and you have Masri, and you have either a screaming or a shofar blowing, as we shall see later. So the Gemara says that this is the only way in which it's stricter. So obviously, it is not stricter in having extra brachos and shemona esrei. It doesn't have 24 brachos and shemona esrei that you don't have in the first two sets of fast days. So Gemara says again, I can tell you the same thing, was left out. There's another difference, but it was left out. Gemara said, you can't leave out one thing. If you're leaving out this, you have to leave out something else as well. So the Gemara says, we did, we left out the fact that you bring the Aaron out into the street in the final set of it fast. So Gemara says, now a different answer. It's not that the Aaron is uh, different because it's in the public eye, but the Aaron being brought out is different because this is the Mishnah. And the Mishnah um, has other Mishnahis as well, and there is a different Mishnah that lists the difference. So our Mishnah didn't have to mention that. Now, even though this is a bit... Uh, not so smooth because our Mishnah said, Ma Elu in what ways are they different? Which implies that these are going to be all the ways. But we could rely on another Mishnah later which says that, it, that there is an additional thing and that you bring the Aaron out in the last set of fast and you don't do that in the early set of the fast. So the, the Gemara says, Once you've come on to that, once you've given me this answer, that you're allowed to say that there are differences that are listed in the Mishnah because they're listed in later Mishnahis. I can say that about the 24 brachos as well. 24 brachos of, this, of the last set of fasts in Shemona Esrei are mentioned in the later Mishnah, and therefore those do exist. You do have the 24. They're mentioned in later Mishnahis, even though they're not listed in this Mishnah. And therefore, like we said earlier, the first two sets of fast have only 18 brachos or 19 brachos, and the last set has 24 brachos, and therefore we've successfully resolved our issue. You could say that we were referring to the first two sets of fast where you only have 19, and we're really talking about the Tzibor. Tzibor means the Chazar Sashatz. It doesn't mean a public fast day. Now, I think what was the conclusion of our discussion as to where Anenu is supposed to be? Is it its own bracha between Geula and Rifa'enu, or is it in Shema Kalenu? So the Gemara says that the final conclusion is still a dispute. Rav Chibar Ashi says in the name of Rav that it's a separate bracha between Geula and Rifa'enu, and Rav Ashi says in the name of Rav Yanai, son of Rabbi Yishmael, that it's, that it's included in Shemei Tfila. The Gemara Paskins that Talacha is that it's in Shemei Tfila. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzhak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.